Hi, everybody. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay, and hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Z. I am from Wonder Spark Puppets, and today we are going to be making a really awesome puppet. We're going to be making a pangolin puppet because it is jungle week here at Wonder Spark Puppets. So that means that every single day this week, Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday, we are making jungle themed puppets. So tune in Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. like you are today and Saturdays and Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And you can see us live making puppets out of things that you already have in your house to be able to make shows from. Uh, so today, let me show you the puppet we're gonna be making. It's a pangolin puppet. Pangolins are really awesome, and there's a pangolin featured in our puppet show that we'll be showing on this Friday, tomorrow at 11 a.m. So there's my pangolin, and he can roll up and roll around and then whoop, unroll and go on his way. <laughs> so I'm really excited to show you how to make this really cool puppet. So let's go ahead. He's just so fun. I just want to play with him all day. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what are we gonna need to make our awesome pangolin puppet? Well, it's very simple. The first thing that we're gonna need is a pattern, and you're gonna be able to find a link to that pattern in the description of this video and also in the comments on Facebook, okay? So here is the pattern that's gonna look something like this. You're also gonna need a cereal box. I have the scraps of a cereal box here because we just keep reusing our materials. So here is my cereal box here. You are also gonna need a pipe cleaner. You don't need a whole pipe cleaner. I have a piece of a pipe cleaner, mine's brown. 
Um, I have a chopstick because we are continuing to work through our stash of wooden chopsticks that we used to get when we would get takeout when we were in New York City. Because this summer we are in Springville, New York. We have a residency at the Springville Center for the Arts. Thank you so much, Springville Center for the Arts. Uh, so we are still using these chopsticks. So make sure you have a chopstick. And if you don't have a wooden chopstick, no worries. You could use an unsharpened pencil or just a long, thin stick okay and then i have some really strong tape i really like uh, scotch masking tape but any kind of really strong tape will do and scissors and a black pen um, and a pencil if you want one and then extra credit if you really want to um, go the extra mile and you have one a small hole punch that's what I'm gonna use but you can just use a sharp pencil to poke a hole in or a needle or a pin or something like that or you have an adult come and help you um, that will come in handy in a little bit so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come on over to my action cam down here and we have our pattern. Now I want you to print out this pattern and then we're gonna cut out these shapes, okay? And you're gonna see holes right here and here, those two little dots. I want you to poke holes into those dots. They are important, okay? So you'll cut out these two shapes, poke holes in the dots, and once you have done that, you are going to have these two pattern pieces right here. Now. This is the tail and this is the body and you can see that I have indeed poked a hole right there. I have a small tiny hole punch so I used that for the hole poking part but you can easily use a sharp pin or needle or even a sharp pencil will poke a hole through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these pattern pieces, take our cereal box we're gonna place them on the cereal box and we are going to trace, okay? So I have my black pen here. I just think that a black pen shows up a lot better on the cereal box, plus we are going to use our black pen to decorate our pangolin in a moment. So, black pen, but uh, if you wanna use a pencil for this part, that's totally fine. I know tracing can be a little tricky. So we are going to take these pattern pieces oop, and trace, trace, trace onto our cereal box. Now don't forget to tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time because uh, Chad from Wonderspark Puppets will be performing a double feature, The Lion and the Mouse, which features a pangolin. And make sure you fill in the uh, little hole right here. And then he will also be performing The Tortoise and the Hare. So two Aesop's Fables tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We're so excited to be able to share those shows with you and make sure that you share those links with people, invite friends to come watch. We have some school groups that have been tuning in every Friday and we're just so happy to be able to share these uh, puppet shows with all of you. And I hope that you all have been having a really nice week. I know that some of you in the country are um, already done with school for the year. Some of you are continuing school and some of you are gonna have summer school this year, which is exciting. So I traced my two pattern pieces and you can see I filled in those little holes right there. Now I'm gonna cut them out. Oh, Julie Ross says that she loves that we use recycled materials. Yes, recycling is very important to us. We are firm believers in refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle. So what do I mean by that? Refuse means if uh, somebody is offering you something and you really don't need it, it's okay to say no. Um, also, think about ways that you can reduce how much you're using all the time. And um, if there's if there's a way to not have to um, use something only one time, if you can reuse it, use it multiple times, that's even better. And then uh, recycle, make sure that that material can become something else in its lifetime. We're big believers of that and also follow the zero waste movement as well, trying to create a smaller footprint from our time on this planet. And we love the planet Earth and we're trying to to be uh, good stewards 
for our generation and the generations that come after us. My mom is here. Hi, mom. I am cutting out our pangolin pieces. And remember, if you are new to scissor skills or you're working on your scissor skills, we want to keep those scissors facing straight and then move the material around the scissors. And that's going to help us to get a nice fluid cut. Okay? And then with these scraps, we are going to recycle those scraps into our paper recycling. So I've cut out our tail, and now I'm going to cut out our body. And when we're cutting out, I always do our big cuts first, and then I go in and do our fancy cuts. We have been at the Springville Center for the Arts in residency for about a week and a half now. We are so excited to be here. It's been really great. Seth, who is the director of the Center for the Arts, and his amazing staff have just been so wonderful. And um, we're, we just had a great meeting with him today about ways that we might be able to give back to the community here in Springville, New York. And we're just, you know, we're just really excited to be able to be in a new space and learn more about the town and the people here. Chad grew up here, but you know neither of us have lived here in a long time. So it's very exciting. And we also want to give a shout out to Love Inc., our neighbors upstairs who are also a part of our residency here and have allowed us to be downstairs in this space. Okay, so now we have our body and our tail cut out. But they don't quite look like a pangolin yet and that's because we need to draw on what a pangolin looks like and you can see here that pangolin has a lot of scales so that's what we're going to be using our black pen for is to draw on these scales and then also attach our tail to our body but the first thing we're going to do is do some drawing with our black pen okay so I'm gonna take the body and start working on that this part of the body right here, this might look like a tail, but this is actually the head, the point that's coming down right here. These are feet, these are feet, and then this one right there, that is the head. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little squiggle right above the head, connecting where the neck is right here up to about here. See where I made my little line right there? So we're gonna make a little squiggle line like multiple M's all the way across, just like this. Okay? And actually I'm just gonna color that in a little bit just so you guys can really see it. And now my neck will have a little bit of a collar, but yours doesn't have to do this. Do you see that? That is where we're ending our scales on our pangolin and where the head is gonna start, all right? Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to keep making these kind of big half oval shapes all the way across, just like this. And I'm gonna do that all the way across the body, okay? And when I do it, so I did one row just then, the next row I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of overlap them. See how I didn't do it right on top? I did it so that the middle of the next one is kind of underneath the other one, right? I started this one in the middle of this one and then did my squiggles all the way across. You don't have to do it like that, but it's an idea. And then kind of bring it down so that we have a line and we're gonna come back in and do the legs. Okay, so I'm gonna do that all the way across and show you what that looks like. Drawing my little half ovals. And these are the pangolin scales. If you've ever seen a pangolin, they have scales all over their body and they look a lot like an armadillo, but they are different than armadillos. And then as things start to get, you know, a little weird, like your line is not working out. Just put in more squiggles, it's fine. More half ovals. Don't worry about coloring over your dot. We're gonna come back to that in a minute and poke a hole there, 
because that's where our tail is going to get attached. And see, I want to show you where, how I'm doing so far. So all my scales are going that way. And I'm going to fill in this bottom area right here up until right about here where the legs start. Okay. There are no rules about these scales except that it's helpful if you have them all facing the same way. And then as we're getting down towards the tail, I'm going to start to tilt them a little bit so that they're going this way and rounding out the body. Okay, you see I started to tilt them a little so that they start going down the body. And then as we get to the bottom here, I'm just going to do, it almost looks like a little waves, tiny little scales. Just filling in here for both feet. Just like that. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is fill in a little dot right here at the end for the nose. Filled in a dot right there for the nose. And then I'm going to do an eye, another little black dot right here, and then a little eyebrow. And you can make them smiling, him or her smile if you want. Uh, it's up to you. I'm not going to put a mouth on mine, but you are welcome to. And now we're going to do the same kind of thing with our tail. So when we are doing our tail, we're going to start with the end that has the dot right here. And again, we're going to do our half circles. And then just do lines of half circles. I'm going to do three rows and then show you where I'm at. Okay, can you see that? Just like that. So I did half circles and made a line. Lots of rows, I should say rows. And then as it starts to curve around, my scales, my half circles are gonna curve around as well. They're more like half ovals, really. So here we go. We're gonna make these and bring them around. And you can use different colored pens if you want, but you just want to make sure that they stand out. And I really like the coloring of the cereal box, so I didn't even color in my pangolin because this is very close to the color that a pangolin is. It's like a grayish brownish color to kind of blend in with the dirt and desert surroundings that it lives in. So we're just going to keep making these scales. And bring them around and as the tail starts to turn you just turn those scales a little bit so make your half circle go with the curve it's okay if you don't have like a perfect line nature is not uh, does not have perfect lines it, everything is a little different and and if you make a lot of these each time you make it, it's gonna look different and that's exciting too so all these little half ovals and we're coming around to the tip of the tail and as we get closer to the tip of the tail we're going to make smaller little half ovals. Here we go. And smaller and smaller and smaller and teeny tiny and then it just like squiggles at the end okay smaller 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 all the way till teeny tiny little squiggles at the tip all right now what we're going to do is take something sharp and poke it through the dots where the holes are going to be or if you have a tiny hole punch this is not a regular size hole punch it's a smaller hole punch you can punch a little hole right there, okay? But if you don't have one of these, 
and I understand most people probably do not, um, you can use something sharp to just poke a hole through. All you're going to need that hole for is to put your pipe cleaner through it. Okay. So now take your pipe cleaner, you don't need the whole thing, cut off about the length of your middle finger, maybe a little bit longer, but just about the length of an adult's middle finger is about this, the length that you need, so you don't need the whole pipe cleaner. So put the rest back in your craft drawer for another craft that I'm sure we'll use it for. You want the tail to be on top of the body, not behind. So put your tail on top, okay? line up those two holes and then put your pipe cleaner through halfway see I have oops, half of it coming out of one side half of it coming out of the other and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda make a little spiral on one side and smoosh that together nice and snug and then flip it over and do the same thing on the back. Kind of spiral it together and then smoosh it down. All right, just like that. And now you have a little hinge. All right, and when you put the tail over the pangolin, it should cover up his face, just like that. Now we need to make him into a puppet. So flip your puppet over so that he's resting, he or she is resting face down on your workspace. You're going to take your chopstick, your unsharpened pencil, whatever you have at home, and you're going to put it, see here are the legs right here. We're going to put it in between the legs and just about a quarter of an inch, half an inch above right in between the legs. So let me show you. I'm going to draw a dot so you can see where I'm going to put that. See that dot that I just drew? That's where I'm going to attach my stick. Okay? So I have some really strong tape here. I really like a masking tape, but I have to tell you, not all masking tapes are created equal and I am not one for brand loyalty very much but I have to say that scotch masking tape is kind of the best I really love scotch masking tape so scotch masking tape if you're watching this uh, you could always sponsor one of our workshop videos just saying because I kind of love your stuff um, okay so what you want to do is you want to take a piece of tape and attach the stick to the back of your puppet Okay, now I, what I'm doing is I'm taking the tape, I'm putting half of it on the stick, half of it onto the, onto the back of my pangolin, just like this, okay? And then I'm going to mush it down. Oop, but we want to keep our, it's easier if I pr push, put it onto my workspace. Because we want to keep the stick facing straight up. And then kind of give it a little test. You know, like feel it. Is it is it moving anywhere? Is it going any place? Does it feel pretty strong? And then you should be able to let's see if I can get in a position where you can see this really well. Walk our pangolin like that, and then the tail will cover him up and then he can roll. Just like that. And that is how you make a pangolin puppet and then his tail can uncover him and he can go on his merry way. Because when a pangolin gets scared, that's what they do. They're very much like a turtle. They want to bloop, hide their heads. <laughs> Just like that. Well, thank you all so much for coming and watching today, making a pangolin rolling puppet. I'm so glad that you were here. And if you decide to make one of these puppets, please take a picture and show it to us. We would love to see your pangolin puppets that you're making at home. And you can be featured in our Master Crafters Monday post where we showcase a picture of all of our fans who have made puppets the past week. It is jungle themed week here at Wonderspark Puppets. So all of our puppets are jungle themed. And be sure to tune in tomorrow, Friday, for a very special 11 a.m. free puppet show of the lion and the mouse featuring a 
tangled in. And also uh, the tortoise and the hare, two Aesop's fables, a double feature. And then at 4 p.m., we will have another puppet workshop, and Saturday and Sundays at 10 a.m., another puppet workshop. And uh, if you'd like to support us, there's lots of different ways that you can. Visit wondersparkpuppets.com. We are creating online live content featuring puppets of all sorts for you every single day. So thank you so much. Again, my name is Z. I'm co-artistic director of Wonderspark Puppets, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.